In Erica's dream, she heard music. It was unlike any music she'd heard before, and in its beautiful strangeness, it filled her. Like a pressurized gas, it entered every space around her and in her. Its gossamer strands wrapped her, sang through her. A desperate euphoria overcame her as the music entered her very being. There was an explosion. She awoke to violent, screaming chaos. The Boeing flying her from Los Angeles to New Zealand immediately began to break apart. She looked on numbly, not making sense of what she was seeing. Roaring noise, terrified, panic-stricken faces, the terrible sensation of falling, and then, in an instant, nothingness. As the airliner was disintegrating around her, Erica had seen sunlight pour into the cabin. She awoke now at night. She sat up shakily, realizing that she was floating. She was on some type of raft. She was wet, but drying. In the dim light, she seemed to be alone. Around her in all directions, the moonlight painted the softly undulating crest a pitch black. Hello? She tried weakly. No answer. Only the soft splashing of the ocean water against the side of the raft. Unsteadily, she began to crawl to the opposite side of what she was now realizing was an evacuation slide. How long had she been unconscious? How had she gotten aboard the raft? There must have been other survivors of the blast. They must have pulled her on board. Now she had reached the far end of the raft, and she was alone. Where are they now? She thought gravely. Hello? She screamed into the night. Is anyone there? As the moments passed, it began to set in. The hopelessness. The dread. She pressed her hands to her face and she felt the scratching of the salt against her skin where the seawater had dried. And she began to sob, salt mingling with salt. The moon showed down on her mutely in the gently heaving expanse. The music began again. Erica froze, terrified. She withdrew her hands from her eyes. The music was quiet but unmistakable. She tried to look around, but the dim night and her tear-filled eyes kept her from seeing. Anyway, there was nothing to see, only the dark, indifferent ocean. The music swelled. Erica began to scramble around the slick floor of the raft. The music was filling her again, its strange vibrato now unpleasant and unwelcome. This was the same music from her dream, all the same notes, but it seemed now to signify something else entirely, and it grew. The music filled the world around her, only this time the pressurized gas seemed toxic. It seeped into her now, becoming her. Screaming, her hands over her ears, she, sh she threw herself about the small vessel, seeking escape. Finally, she threw herself overboard. Under the water, the music was quiet. The relief was immediate and overwhelming. The noise continued above the waves, but below it was muted, and Erica observed the noise had been stripped of its power. She could hear it softly, but it could not fill her. Not while she was down here. She held her breath as long as she could, and finally went back up. The breath of air she took was not consolation enough for the return of the music. It plunged into her, as if it had been waiting for her specifically. She knew what she had to do. Erica exhaled and submerged her body again. She swam down, and with each kick of her feet she descended deeper into the darkness, but the music became more and more distant. Finally. She escaped.